Silk Quilt Shop. Every quilter's dream shop with old style hospitality. New Style was established in 1876 in Kansas City, Missouri. Moving to Stover, Missouri in 1973, becoming part of the quilt capital of the world per capita. In 1985, the Laura Dale and family then moved New Style Quilt Shop on Route 52, offering everything one would need for making a dream quilt. Not only is one able to purchase all the basic needs to make a quilt, but will receive expert assistance from owner consultant Laura Dale and crew. They will assist the customer in finding that perfect fabric and pattern. New Style has top-of-the-line fabric from fabric suppliers, keeping in mind the needs of the quilter. You will always find the latest and the greatest at New Style. You will enjoy beautiful samples at New Style and the new look that has been created. Visit New Style Quilt Shop on Route 52 to receive a touch of that old-style hospitality. Call them at 1-800-821-7490. Lots to do on Route 52, Stover, Missouri. Please join me now as I uh, turn to Laura Reynolds on the outskirts of Osceola, Missouri, uh, who will be sharing her world of quilting with you today on Quilting Inside and Out. Well, welcome, Laura. It's great to have you here. I've been looking forward to this uh, for the last six months or Several more. Several months, yes. Several months. I'm so glad you're finally here, Rick. It's great to see you and great to have everybody here with us today. Super, super. Uh, well, uh, I'm joining Mrs. Reynolds, so we're at her shop called Fluff and Ruffles. Uh, if you've heard of that shop, a real nice layout, as you can see. So I'd like to ask Laura a couple questions, if I may call you by your first name. Please. Um, I'm really excited to have you here, and it's, if you can, though, share with the viewers a little bit of what describes Laura Reynolds. Well, um, I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, believe it or not. I'm a city girl. And um, I married a Texan. And so we ended up in Missouri um, early on in our marriage. And we were actually in independence. And uh, it wasn't until we got a chance to move out to the country and settled out here that I, um, I've always loved handcrafts and uh, making things, knitting, crocheting, and sewing. And it wasn't until we got out here that I found Brenda's quilt stop down on 54, and she was very instrumental in um, getting me into quilting. And so um, it's just, I've caught the fever. It's fabulous. I love the colors and the designs and, um, Oh, about, oh, I don't know, maybe six or seven years ago, my husband suggested that I uh, long arm for hire, and so I started looking for machines, and so I settled on the, the Gamble Statler, and I've been long arming for the last five years with that, and just love it. Gamble's a great machine. Yeah. Well, then you would say that you became inspired recently, or you was inspired by grandmother or, or grandma or what? Uh, someone, an aunt, who quilted in past years, a lot of that... I do have quilting, quilting in my blood. <laughs> it's my <laughs> my um, grandmother and my great aunts, and, and um, were all quilters, and so uh, so you I watched them when I was growing up, uh -huh. and uh -huh. at the time, I just watched, and it wasn't until later that I was really interested in it, but... See, now you yeah. probably did some tying in the uh, tie quilts in the back in the day when they tied, and... My uh, grandmother hand quilted. Oh, hand quilted. So, yes. Well, that yeah. was a talent all in itself. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, great. Well, I first met you at a quilt show last year while sharpening for the quilters and was really impressed with your passion. That was uh, a fun show. Yes, it was. <laughs> and that was up at, the, I believe, uh, Rooster yeah, Creek. Rooster oh, Creek. Yeah, Rooster Creek. Yeah, so. that's right. Um, well, that's... Everything that you displayed, I knew I had to interview you oh, thank and you. come to your shop and, and, and share that with our viewers here at uh, uh, Quilting Inside and Out. Well, today in the second half, you're going to be sharing uh, with us uh, your newly found love of uh, making and assisting others, actually, in the uh, planning and making of t-shirts and uh, memory quilts. So, 
Uh, can you share with us how the interest in making these specific quilts came about? Well, actually, in the very beginning, it came to me because uh, whenever you introduce yourself as a quilter, that's usually the first thing that people relate to. So I started thinking, if they're asking for it so many times, I might as well go with it. Uh -huh. I also have um, quite a passion for life and celebrating people's lives with them and celebrating the lives of people who've passed on. And so I'd even looked at doing uh, grief counseling and that kind of thing at one point. Um, and this was kind of a way to tie it all in together and do what I loved and being able to honor that as well. So um, when I when I work on the t-shirt quilts and the memory quilts, um, I consciously pray about the person who's worn the quilts, or worn the, the shirts and, and dresses and clothes. Um, so I, if it's somebody who's still here um, and they have a, a long, prosperous life ahead of them, then I, I pray that they will be well loved and be very successful. And if it's somebody who has passed on, then I pray that they're at peace and that um, everybody who loves them finds grace in their memories. Well, excellent. So, so like an artist, um, I look at quilting as an art, a uh, lot of artwork, a lot of color association theory, and, uh, what have you. So uh, we all seem to paint or make quilts, uh, especially now, as, as Laura shared with us, uh, from a passionate, uh, heartfelt feeling. So there's more that goes into a quilt. A lot of you may have had your, your grandmother uh, uh, maybe presented your mother with a quilt when you was uh, first born. So this goes back a, a way that people can extend uh, their love for their grandchild or, or daughter or whatever. It's been handed down for years. Quite frequently. But, but now you're actually, uh, when they're actually gone through these memory quilts, you're actually to give them even more in, in remembrance <laughs> and what have you for... Uh, uh, that sake, and uh, yeah. you pray along with it. That's even uh, very, uh, very uh, touching. It's, oh well, thank uh, you. Well, at your shop, Fluff and Ruffles, you and your crew, and I believe Sandy is uh, one of your. Yes, assistants. my my That's good it. friend Sandy. I'm very Sandy. grateful for all of her help, and she's she's helped me out quite a bit. Well, you're kept really busy making quilts. Uh, I think you do have a. A shop that you work directly with in Clinton, Missouri. Yes, White Flower Quilt Shop. White Flower um, Quilt Shop. They are in Clinton, and cute little shop right in the square, and I quilt all the samples for them. So oh. I'm very blessed to be able to have that opportunity, and um, very grateful for all the work that comes as a result of uh, that. Well, now, you do work for other people. So, yes. Uh, we call them commissions in, in the art world and painting, but... You do have contact information that you'd like to share, not only yes. with your uh, continued works, uh, you do have contact information, and I understand you're on Facebook. Yes, I'm on so Facebook and Instagram, and I have a website, fluffandruffles.com, and that um, is fluff, spelled out and, A-N-D, ruffles.com. My phone number is 417-646-8092. And um, like I said, my good friend Sandy is in here helping me quite a bit, and she's fabulous at quilt restoration. Yes. So if you have any needs for um, repairing family heirlooms, you can get contact with her through me. Through you, mm -hmm. on your um, uh, telephone or... Yes. Facebook. What yeah. Kind of Excellent. Well, Laura, we must take a break. Okay. And uh, when we come back, uh, we learn more about the process of making your favorite uh, T-shirt and or memory quilt. So uh, stay with us. We'll be right back. Uh, Thank you. Taking our memories uh, and uh, putting them together uh, for the future. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Quilting Inside and Out. I'm your host, Rick J. As we continue our discussion with Laura Reynolds, uh, just uh, a ways up in the boondocks almost, from <laughs> Osceola, Missouri, if you like that word. I'd like to turn now to uh, Laura and uh, let her um, demonstrate to you the production, shall we say, of a t-shirt memory quilt. So, Laura, I'd love to just turn the Spotlight on you and the well, camera thank you. and let you take it from here. All right, that sounds great. Thanks so much, Rick. Great. I'm so glad you all are here and I get to share with you um, how much I love making t-shirt quilts and memory quilts. So memory quilts is a really general term and it basically is a quilt that's celebrating the life of the person who wore the quilts that are used, the, wore the clothes that are used to make the quilt. So um, sometimes the person is no longer with us and sometimes they are still very much alive and it is a, the quilt is a milestone for um, whatever place they are in their lives. T-shirt quilts are like a subcategory of memory quilts and there's a big difference between t-shirt quilts and memory quilts made out of someone's clothes. T-shirt quilts, you just our, um, all you want for a t-shirt quilt is the design in the center of the quilt, whether it's on the front or the back or both, either one. And memory quilts, usually you get a really nice shirt, like this a beautiful Hawaiian shirt right here, and you want to use every piece of fabric in it because you're going to incorporate it into a quilt pattern, and uh, you would open this up ripping all the seams so that you can open it up and lay it flat. All right, let's look a little bit more at memory quilts. Like I said, you want to get all the fabric out of it as possible, and that way you could put it into just about any quilt pattern, any popular classic quilt pattern that's out there. There's lots of ideas on Pinterest and um, and YouTube and that kind of thing. These quilts right over here are a some great samples of things you could do. This is an Irish chain with these cute little piglets on here. This is an Irish chain and you might want to feature some of the your loved ones fabrics by putting them in this nice large square. This quilt is called a split rail and again there's some nice big pieces here that you could easily incorporate your uh, loved ones clothes into. This quilt actually is a memory quilt. This quilt was given to me my, by my grandmother um, at, on my wedding, and it does have fabrics in it made from dresses and other clothing from my mother when she was little and my grandmother, so it's very precious to me. Okay, let's look at um, some things that you need to consider about memory quilts. Since you're using fabrics that somebody wore, you're not using quilting fabrics. Consequently, you would um, have the chance of working with silk and satin and denim and uh, fleece and many different, a wide variety of things. So you need to consider, oh rayon, rayon's another big one. You need to consider the needs of all those fabrics. When you're pressing with the iron, you want to make sure that your iron is the right setting for the fabric so you don't damage it. And something else that's very important to consider is that if your fabrics like silk can't be thrown in the washing machine, then you won't be able to throw that quilt in the washing machine. It'll have to be professionally washed. So um, other things that Sources of fabrics that you could use for your quilts include uniforms. I've seen quilts made out of military uniforms and um, officers' uniforms and doctor's scrubs, all kinds of things like that. Wedding attire. Um, you're never going to wear those clothes again, so why not put them into a quilt? Your handkerchiefs, maybe grandmother's collection of handkerchiefs. Decorative scarves and ties. We know some men with some tie collections, don't we? That would be really cool. I saw the other day quilt blocks made out of boxer shorts. Can you believe it? It was so cute. 
So um, also sometimes you can make other things besides quilts like uh, teddy bears, stuffed animals, and decorative pillows. You also might want to add photographs to your quilts. There are um, lots of companies online that will print it out for you, especially if you want to have it bigger than 8.5 by 11. And you, if you want to print it out yourself, you would need to use an inkjet printer. And EQ Printables has a fabulous printable um, cotton and silk blend that allows you to have brighter colors and more details. There's lots of things available now that are better quality and easier to use than ever before. So, okay, t-shirt quilts. Let's take a look at t-shirt quilts. You don't, you want to wash all your shirts ahead of time and you don't want to use fabric softener on them because that might make them more difficult to adhere to the stabilizer you're going to use later. Also, only use shirts that have some life left to them. If it has a decal on it that is aging and falling off, then that's going to affect the life of your quilt. If that all falls off and it's gone, it's going to look like a big missing spot on your quilt. On the back, it feels rougher. That's the glue. And that's the side that you want to make sure is touching the t-shirt. Okay. Your stabilizer will come with directions on how to press it. And a lot of them are different. So you want to make sure you read the directions for the stabilizer that you're using. Also, you want to cut your stabilizer and your decal larger than you need it. So that when you press it, and you trim it down to the block size, like this one, the stabilizer is going to go right to the edge. Okay, the pressing cloth. This is a pressing cloth that I highly recommend. It's made from fiberglass, and it's really important because it protects the stabilizer and the t-shirt from the iron. Once you get glue and plastic on your iron, there's a really, really good chance that that glue and plastic is going to end up someplace that you do not want it. And so this protects that from happening. Okay. Uh, if you don't have a pressing cloth, you can use a, a sheet of scrap cotton, but it will get the glue and plastic on there, so you just need to be careful of where you reuse that. All right, the steps to making a t-shirt quilt. Let's get busy. We are the first thing you're going to do is go through the whole stack of shirts and familiarize yourself with them. When you come across, like I said before, the largest decal, you're going to make note of that and um, and how big it is. And you might also want to record all of the t-shirts and how big the different blocks would be so that you know how many you have of each of each shirt. Separate the blocks, the backs from the fronts. If you're going, this shirt here has got a decal on the front and the back. And separate the backs really easy. You're going to just cut down the sides using your rotary cutter and ruler. There's a lot there to cut. Okay. All right, there we go. And I cut down the other side. And now my front is separated from my back, sort of. <laughs> okay. How funny. There we go. So we have two separate. And I'm going to take this over to my pressing table and get the fusible on it. Okay, so the best thing to do is to put your decal down. That will protect it the best from the heat of the iron. 
I have some scrap pieces here of my fusible I'm going to use up and I'm just going to layer that on here. Remember, I've got the glue side down onto the t-shirt. The rough side is the glue side. And I can just, and you can do this too, when you, when you cut enough that you have small scraps, you can do this too. Okay, and then I'm going to put my pressing sheet on here. And my iron is not hot. We'll just pretend like it is. <clears throat> My pressing sheet's on there now, and you just press. And you, the PF, the P44F is really easy to use. You do not have to hold the iron on for too long. It doesn't matter if you have steam or not. You don't have to have steam. And you're just going to give it a little bit more of a press than usual. Here we go. All right, thank you for waiting. And it would probably, because my iron was not quite hot enough, so it would take a little bit more, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So we're gonna take this back over to the cutting table. And, all right, there we go, get that out of there. I've got it centered, my ruler centered on there. And I'm gonna get a 12 and a half inch square block out of this decal. So I'm just gonna go right around my ruler. And actually, I'm gonna pick this up and rotate it around. So that'd be the easiest thing to do. And that's all there is to that. So I am going to continue that process for going through all of the shirts and getting them all ready to be sewn. And I will have a stack of shirts like this and I can take it to um, the, de the design wall or um, the floor or my bed and lay it all out. And I'm looking for what looks good to me. Like, um, do I like the colors, the way they're laid out. Um, if I have a design, two t-shirts, two blocks next to each other that are from the same shirt, do I want them right next to each other? Or do I want them mixed in with other blocks? Um, do I like the, uh, the um, colors and the textures of the, of the blocks themselves? And then the next process is to decide what color you want to use on the fabric you put in between the blocks if you're going to do that. Like I said before, you can just join block to block, t-shirt block to t-shirt block. Um, if you want to add a fabric in between, what color are you going to use? Maybe you already know because it's your favorite sports team color, so that's pretty obvious, but maybe you don't. Some of the best colors to use would be black, gray, or blue, like a denim blue. And I caution you against using white because white can be very see-through and that will show the seams of the t-shirts um, behind it. And also if you put white fabric, which is very white, up against a white t-shirt, you will see how white that t-shirt is not. So it would be good not to use white. When you take your fabric to the sewing machine and sew your grid together, please remember when you go to press that to keep that iron away from the decal. Ask me how I know. <laughs> it can be pretty messy. In fact, I think there's stuff on my iron from the last time that happened to me still. Okay. So, I have here this 
really fabulous Boy Scout quilt. I've been so honored to uh, complete a Boy Scout quilt for a treasured Scout Master. And the next time I see you all, I am going to show you how that turned out. I am excited to do that. And I'd like to thank you so much for coming today. And I'd like to thank JCTV and J. Rick Productions. And Rick J., it was a pleasure having you here and allowing me to share my love of quilting and t-shirt quilts. And this was a great experience. Thank you very much. Well, thanks, Laura. That was a great demonstration. Uh, a great learning experience for our viewers. Well, thank and, you. Uh, I know I got a lot of learned something even from watching. So I want to thank you once again for being my guest today here on Quilting Inside and Out. It was a pleasure and quite a learning experience for me as well. <laughs> thank, thank you, you so much. Thank Bye. you. Well, thank you, uh, JCTV producer Gloria Enloe and uh, crew. And I want to also thank uh, you viewers. When you view, don't forget YouTube, which is uh, uh, basically broadcasting worldwide. We're getting a lot of uh, interest from uh, different countries on Quilting Inside and Out. So until next time, um, we'll be seeing, in fact, I want to point out, we'll be seeing, hopefully, uh, Laura once again, when she will be talking about maybe this Boy Scout uh, quilt uh, uh, patterns, working those up. In the meantime, Stay warm. Rick J. saying thank you once again for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye. Come back. Hi. I'm Laura Dale with New Style Quilt Shop in Stover, Missouri. We have been a family-operated business since 1973 serving our community. I find that when you come through our front door, you're going to find us to be friendly. We're going to assist you with your projects, whatever you're working on. As you come into my shop, you're going to see a large array of colors of fabric, high quality thread, patterns, books, notions. Uh, we have a lot of panels, buttons. I am the button queen. We, uh, we have a lot of things going on in our shop. We are now going to have a bag club that you will want to be sure to be a part of. You can contact my shop for information on that to see how that's all going to work. We're going to be having classes. I am just so excited about Quilting Inside and Out uh, to be a sponsor. So remember, there's lots to do on Route 52. Why, Debbie? Laura, I need some Well, let's go get you some. Okay. Come see me.